بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على خير خلق الله أجمعين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واستنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه وجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه آمين وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Last week we covered several names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that were related to his power and might. And so we spoke about Al-Aziz, Al-Jabbar, Al-Qawi, Al-Mateen. All of these names go back to the meanings of might, power, uh, the irresistible force of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. And so tonight, inshallah, we're going to continue along that same theme, moving on to names that relate to his supremacy, his domination, him prevailing over his creation. And so these names that we have tonight are two names, Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar. Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar. And so both of these names, if we were to think about it, they come from the same root word, of Qahar, which in the Arabic language means to subjugate, to prevail over. But obviously there has to be a difference now between these two names. So what is the difference? Basically, in the Arabic language, we have different scales. So you have the scale of fa'il, which means the doer. And then you have the scale of fa'al, which means the doer who does a lot of something, or who does something continuously. And we mentioned this previously, which with uh, which names of Allah, Previously, we, we covered two names of Allah that had the same root word. And it had the same difference. Who can recall which those two names were? They were Ar-Raziq and Ar-Razaq. So Ar-Raziq is the provider. Ar-Razaq is the one who continuously provides, constantly. And so here, with Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar, the first, Al-Qahir, is the one who is supreme, who dominates. And Al-Qahar is the one who is ever dominating, the one who is ever irresistible. And so both of these two names have been mentioned in the Qur'an. As for Al-Qahir, it's been mentioned twice. It's been mentioned twice. And both times, it's been mentioned in the same sentence. The same words were used. And both times are in the same surah. And that is Surah Al-An'am. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse in verse 18 of Surah Al-An'am, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ He is, he reigns supreme over his servants. He is Al-Qahir فَوْقَ over عِبَادِهِ over his servants. وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is 
the all wise, the all aware. This is the first place in Surah Al An'am. The second place in Surah Al An'am is in verse 61. Verse 61, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ Notice the same words. وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ And he is Al-Qahir فَوْقَ over عِبَادِهِ Over his servants. But the continuation is different. And so Allah says here, وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَةِ And he sends recording angels to watch over you. So this is with respect to Al-Qahir. As for Al-Qahar, it's been mentioned uh, six times in the Qur'an. It's been mentioned six times in the Qur'an. And what we notice is that every time it's been mentioned, it's been combined with another name of Allah. And the same name for that matter. Previously, we mentioned names of Allah that are usually combined with other names. But usually they're, they're mentioned with several other names. For example, we mentioned last week, Al-Aziz. It's mentioned with several of Allah's names. So it's mentioned with Al-Hakim. It's mentioned with Al-Alim. It's mentioned with Rahim. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ عَزِيزٌ الرحيم, etc. But with Qahar, each of the six times it's been mentioned, it's been mentioned with the same name of Allah. Which name is that? Which name is that? Actually, two names of Allah. Allah and Al-Wahid Allah and Al-Wahid Allah and Al-Wahid And so for example In Surah Yusuf When Yusuf alayhi salam Was thrown in prison And he met his Prison mates And he wanted to Basically they asked him to they had asked him to uh, interpret for them their dream. He didn't right away interpret it for them. Instead, he said this is an opportunity to give da'wah and to call them to the oneness of Allah. And so what did he say? Ya sahiba yassijin a'arubabun mutafarriquna khayrun amillahu al-wahidu al-qahar Oh my fellow prisoners, which is far better? Many different lords or Allah, Al-Wahid, the one, and Al-Qahar, the prevailing, the supreme. Another example of Al-Qahar is in Surah Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, at the end of Surah Ibrahim, talking about the Day of Judgment, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ The day when the earth will be changed into a different earth and the heavens as well. And then Allah says, وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ And they will all appear before Allah, الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ The one and the Qahar. So as we can see from these two names, Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar, Allah is the one who prevails over everything. He is dominant over His creation. He is the one who is victorious over any opposition. He is the one who is, whose will is irresistible. He is the one who is dominant. He is the one whom everyone submits to the one who everyone has to submit to with regards to al-qahir and specifically this ayah wa huwa al-qahir fawqa ibadih ibn kathir he says in his uh, tafsir it means to allah the next 
are subservient, that tyrants are humble before him, and he has complete control over everything. The creatures have all bowed down to Allah and are humbled before his grace, his honor, his pride, his greatness, his highness, and his ability over all things. The creatures are insignificant before him, for they are all under his irresistible decision and power. So this is the meaning of Allah being فوق عباده Allah being قاهر prevailing supreme over his servants. As for Qahar, we mentioned that it has been mentioned six times. And each time it was mentioned with Allah and Al-Wahid. Now, what is the significance of that? What is the significance of that? Why would Allah specifically mention this one name? And not any other name combined with Al-Qahar. And Al-Wahid is a name that we previously covered. It was in the very beginning. And we mentioned that Al-Wahid means the one. The one and only. So what does that have to do with Al-Qahar? And if we were to reflect over the Qur'an and how Allah uses His names, we always find that there is a wisdom in it. There's always a wisdom behind mentioning certain names with others. And we mentioned this, we gave an, uh, several examples of this. For example, Al-Aziz, why is it mentioned so many times with Al-Hakim? We mentioned this last week, right? Why is Al-Aziz mentioned so many times with Al-Hakim? Why? Al-Aziz being the Almighty and Al-Hakim being the All-Wise. Because? Yeah. So basically, we mentioned Al-Aziz being the Almighty. Usually people who, are, who have might and power, they misuse that might and power. So Allah wanted to show us that He is not like that. And so He is Al-Aziz, and at the same time He is Al-Hakim, the All-Wise. And so He uses His power and His might in a just way, in a wise way, not misusing it. Here with Al-Qahar and Al-Wahid, what we notice is that all six times that they have been mentioned, all six times that Al-Qahar has been mentioned, it has been mentioned in two contexts. The first is, Affirming Allah's oneness, the tawheed of Allah, and refuting the arguments of the mushrikun who associate partners with Allah. And so the meaning of al-qahar here is that Allah prevails and is dominant over the mushrikun and their weak and feeble arguments justifying their shirk. And so he is the one who subdues the doubts and the arguments with clear evidences. And so that's the significance of mentioning Al-Wahid with Al-Qahar. Allah is one. He is one in every way. And he is also one alone deserving worship alone without any partners. And so the mushrikun who worship with Allah partners, they try to justify that worship and they try to justify their shirk. And so they'll argue with you. They'll put forth different arguments and Allah abolishes all of their arguments. And that was through the Qur'an. That was through the Qur'an. And that's why Allah commanded the Prophet wasallam when he was in Mecca, not to wage a physical jihad against his opponents, 
with the sword. That came later in Medina. But Allah commanded him to wage a jihad in Mecca. What was that? That was Allah's command. وَجَاهِدْهُمْ بِهِ جِهَادًا كَبِيرًا Fight them in jihad with it. What is it? The Qur'an. Abolish their arguments with what? With the Qur'an. Use the Qur'an as your weapon. Because the Qur'an is filled with arguments, clear evidences, showing how Allah prevails over the mushrikun. And so look at all of these ayat. We said Qahar has been mentioned six times. Four of these times is in this context. So the first we mentioned in the story of Yusuf. He said, my fellow prisoners, which is far better? Many different lords or Allah the one? The Qahar. So here Yusuf salam is abolishing their idea of shirk. The other ayah, Surah Al-Ra'd, Allah says, أَمْ جَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ شُرَكَاءَ خَلَقُوا كَخَلْقِهِ فَتَشَابَهَ الْخَلْقُ عَلَيْهِمْ Or have they associated with Allah partners who supposedly produced a creation like His creation, leaving them confused about two creations? قُلِ اللَّهُ خَالِقُ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَحَارِ Say, Allah is the creator of all things and He is Al-Wahid Al-Qahar. This is in Surah Al-Ra'd, verse 16. The third example, in Surah Sa'd, in verse 65, Allah says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا مُنْذِرْ Say, O Muhammad, I am nothing but a warner. وَمَا مِنْ إِلَٰهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهُ الْوَاحِدُ الْقَهَارِ and there is no ilah, there is no deity, object of worship, who deserves worship except Allah, al-wahid, al-qahar. And finally, the fourth example is in Surah Al-Zumar, verse 4, in, right in the very beginning. لَوْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ After Allah mentioned how they have taken partners with Allah and they have associated to Allah offspring and a son Allah says لو أراد الله أن يتخذ ولدا لاصطفى مما يخلق ما يشاء had it been Allah's will to take children he could have chosen whatever he willed of his creation سبحانه هو الله الواحد القهار glory be to him he is Allah الواحد القهار so now these are four places where Al-Qahar is mentioned. All four we can see are in the context of Allah affirming his Tawheed and abolishing shirk. So Allah mentioning his name Al-Qahar is in the sense that Allah prevails, is dominant in subduing the mushrikun and their arguments. And he has prevailed over them. The second context in which Al-Qahar is mentioned, and once again with Al-Wahid, is in the context of warning the mushrikun of the punishment that awaits them in the Akhirah. Threatening them with the punishment of Allah on the Day of Judgment. So the meaning of Al-Qahar here is that Allah will prevail and will be dominant over the mushrikun in the akhirah and they will have to be subjugated to him. They will have to submit to him, humble themselves to him. And so he will resurrect everyone and no one will be able to resist that. He will bring everyone before him to judge them and no one will be able to resist that and that is the meaning of al-qahar 
the one who subjugates everyone, the one who no one can resist him, the irresistible one. And so he will prevail over everyone on that day. And this has been mentioned twice. This has been mentioned twice. The first time is in Surah Ibrahim, as we mentioned. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ والسماوات. The day when the earth will be changed to another earth, and the heavens as well. وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ and they will all appear before Allah, meaning on the Day of Judgment, Al-Wahid Al-Qahar. And the second time that this has been mentioned in this context, and this is now the sixth time that Al-Qahar has been mentioned in the Qur'an, in Surah Ghafir, verse 16, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَوْمَ هُمْ بَارِزُونَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُمْ شَيْءٍ on the day that all will appear before Allah, nothing about them will be hidden at all. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمِ Allah will ask, who does the mulk, who does the authority and the dominion, who does it belong to on this day? لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ It belongs to Allah, the one, the supreme. So what we can see is a clear correlation between Al-Qahar and Al-Wahid. Here, concerning the Day of Judgment, it's clear. Only Allah will remain alone. Their false gods that they worshipped will vanish on that day. They will have no power, no might, no help from their false gods that they used to put so much trust in, that they used to worship, thinking that it is a source of elevation, source of might. All of that will vanish on that day, and only Al-Wahid and Al-Qahar will remain, and that is Allah. Among the lessons that we learn from these two names of Allah, Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar, first of all, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevails over His entire creation. No matter how much might they may have, no matter who they are in this dunya, they can never resist the force of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so if they could, they would by resisting death. But they can't. This is why Allah reminds us after He tells us that He is in Surah Al-An'am, the second instance, which is verse 61. What did Allah say? وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَيُرْسِلُ عَلَيْكُمْ حَفَظَةِ he is Qahir over his servants and he sends recording angels to watch over you. Then what does Allah say? Hatta Ida Jaa Ahadakumul Mautu Tawafatu Rusuluna Humla Yufaritu. Then when death comes to any of you, our angels take the soul and they they, they never neglect this duty. The angels do not neglect this duty of taking away the soul at the time of death. Showing us that who is in charge, who is in control, who has the ultimate might and power, none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the irresistible one. And so Allah prevails over His entire creation and no matter how much, no matter how much might or strength we have, no one, no matter who they are, can resist Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second lesson that we learn is that Allah prevails over us and subjugates us to His will as He subhanahu wa ta'ala pleases. As He pleases. Without us having any say in His decisions. 
So that's the meaning of Allah being the irresistible one. His will is fulfilled. His will is executed. We cannot resist Allah and His will. And whatever He decides, whatever He plans for us. And so we, we should not object to Allah. That's what we learn from this. Who are we to object to Allah when we have no say in His decisions? لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. He is not questioned about what he does, but rather they will be questioned. Meaning, Allah is not questioned about what he does, but it is we who will be questioned by Allah. Why? Because he is our Rabb. And He is our Creator. It's simple. No one should say why. Why is it that Allah does not give us the choice to decide our Qadr? The answer is very simple because He is your Creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He created you, He never took your permission to create you. He created you without asking you. So who are you to question Allah? But now, this does not mean, this does not mean that Allah has forced us and not given us free will. Yes, when it comes to the qadr of Allah, what Allah plans for us, that is in Allah's hands and He wills for it to happen the way it happens without any choice on our part. However, Allah has given us free will for our actions that will result in either reward or punishment in the Akhirah. That is what Allah has given us free will in. And that is why no one can justify their evil actions by trying to use qadr and saying Allah willed for me to do these evil actions without any choice on my part that's not true Allah has given you a free will Allah has given you a free will and so that is why we affirm that although Allah plans and He wills, and He has subdued us, the very meaning of Al-Qahar, and Him being Al-Qahar, He has subdued us to His will. Although that is true, when it comes to our actions, our human actions that will result in either reward or punishment in the Akhirah, He has given us the free will to decide. He has given us the free will to decide. And each, each and every single one of us recognizes that. It's not, something, it's not something difficult to understand. If someone was to go on to, go on to a bridge and say, I'm going to commit suicide, I'm going to jump off of this bridge, and there's people around and he tells them, I'm doing this because I'm being subjugated by the will of Allah. I have no choice. Would anyone accept that? No, no one would accept that. So we all recognize that we have free will. So why is it that when we commit sins, we want to put the blame on Allah and not take responsibility for our own action that we did as a result of our free will? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed both his will as well as our will. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا إِنْ يَشَاءُ Allah. You do not will except that Allah also wills. So Allah attributed to us human beings free will and he also attributed to himself his will. And so they go hand in hand. We cannot deny either. 
The third lesson that we learn from Al-Qahir and Al-Qahar is that these two names should make one to feel weak and humbled before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his might and his irresistible force. Especially when you realize that everything happens by the command of Allah, by the wish of Allah. When you become sick, it was as a result of the will of Allah. When a calamity strikes you, it happened because of the will of Allah. You cannot resist it. And so this should make us to feel weak before Allah. To feel humbled before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thus pushing you to worship Allah. That is the eventual result in understanding this name of Allah. That it should push you to worship Allah and put your trust in Allah. And seek Allah's protection from every harm, from every evil. Because you know and you realize that everything is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Finally, the last lesson that we can learn from Al-Qahar is that this is a name that belongs to Allah alone. And so it is not suitable for human beings to be named as Qahar. And so we mentioned previously that there are certain names that Allah has that we human beings can also use as long as we take away the al in the beginning. So for example, Aziz. It's a title that was used in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam as Allah mentions in Surah Yusuf. Also we said Rahim. You can refer to someone as being Rahim, as being merciful. Hakim, you can refer to someone as being wise, and so on and so forth. As for Qahar, it's not a name that is suitable for us. And we should not describe ourselves with this attribute of Qahar. And that's because usually anyone who is described with it, usually uses it and misuses it. And so Allah mentions this in the story of Fir'aun. قَالَ سَنُقَتِّلُ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ وَنَسْتَحْيِي نِسَاءَهُمْ That we will kill their sons and we will keep their women. وَإِنَّا فَوْقَهُمْ قَاهِرُونَ And we will completely prevail over them. قَاهِرُونَ We will be dominant over them. And so usually when it is mentioned as a, an attribute for human beings, it's mentioned in that negative connotation. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu uh, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from al-qahr with respect to the orphans. In Surah al-Duha, فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ فَأَمَّا الْيَتِيمَ فَلَا تَقْهَرْ As for the orphan, do not subjugate him. Do not oppress him. So this is a name and an attribute that is not suitable for human beings. As for Allah, then as we mentioned earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, although he is al-qahar, he doesn't misuse his dominance. He doesn't misuse his irresistible force. But rather, he uses it in only what is haqq, in only what is true, and in only what is justice, as we have seen. And that's why Allah says, وَهُوَ الْقَاهِرُ فَوْقَ عِبَادِهِ وَهُوَ الْحَكِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ And he is the wise and the all-knowing. 
And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us beneficial knowledge of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala through His names, His most beautiful names and lofty attributes. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.